You spend hours doing practice problems, but don't get the grades that reflect it. You can easily follow the explanations in class, but when it comes down to taking the test, you have no idea where to start. Maybe you don't study right now, but you want to start studying, but you have no idea where to start. If any of these sound like you, or even if they don't, this video will teach you my process of learning maths and doing well on tests and exams. Although I don't like the way that we're being tested on math in schools, it is something that we can easily take advantage of to excel in. It doesn't take too much to be a competitive student. The vast majority of maths, especially in the high school level, is just training to be able to recognise what the problem is asking and then having a process to give and find an answer. You're given some formulas and asked to apply them to some questions, but you don't even know where they come from or why they even work. The kind of unpopular opinion that I have is that anyone is able to excel in maths because maths is more of a practicable skill than it is a test of intelligence. It's not smart people that do well in maths, it's people who are good at maths who do well in maths. Okay then, so how can I get better math grades? In my opinion, it's a two-step process. Step one, building the foundations. It all starts with the foundations. If you really master this step, especially for the more basic topics, everything else will come so much easier. The idea is to build a really good conceptual understanding of whatever subject you're learning. The main reasoning for this is to prevent false assumptions that you'd make which would lose you marks. For example, say you have some fractions 2x plus 3 over 2y plus 3. A common misconception is that you can simplify these fractions, maybe cancelling the plus 3s or the factor of 2 in front of the variables. The reason people make these assumptions is because they were taught they can cancel factors, but they don't actually know why they can cancel things. So how do we build this foundation? in the best possible way. There's really two ways you can go about this. The first is learning the subject from as many different angles as you can. So to do this, you'd relearn the concepts from different sources. So instead of just learning from a textbook, you'd go to different websites or forums or to YouTube videos explaining the subject. For example, a while ago, when I was first learning about Taylor series, I would first learn about it from the textbook I was reading. Then I went to YouTube and I found maybe three different videos on the subject that really deepened my understanding. Then I went to a forum website and saw what other people were saying about it. The second strategy that you can use to build foundations is working through the content yourself. So for example, say you were learning about different trig identities. A nice exercise would be proving all of them yourself instead of relying on memorizing the formulas like most students generally do. When you do this, you build your own understanding and you're way more likely to remember these formulas and what they're used for. And because you proved all the content yourself, you're more likely to recognize when that specific part is being assessed in a test or exam. Another recommendation that I have is exploring a subject as a whole before you really spend your time learning it. For example, in my school, differentiation is taught before the students even hear about integration and limits and what the subject could possibly be used for. By exploring the subject as a whole and seeing where things lead, It'll make it easier to understand how everything is interconnected and you'll be able to view the subject from another angle. By forming these foundations, you're filling in potential gaps in your knowledge base which will lead to better grades. Step 2 is practicing. This step seems very simple, but it's something that a lot of people somehow still mess up. I know people who spend ages doing endless practice problems but still don't do well in tests and this is because they don't spend that time productively. Some people believe that you need to do many of these simple problems so that you don't miss out on anything, but this is honestly a waste of time, because if you have a deep enough understanding of the subject, these simple problems should easily come to you. The proper way to do practice problems is by doing them in a way that contributes to your understanding. I recommend that you start off by working on simple problems if you need to, but maybe 90% of your time should be spent doing problems that really challenge you. Doing problems that take upwards of 30 minutes will help your understanding, even if it means staring at a page for a while, not sure what to do next, or restarting a few times. Another benefit of doing these really challenging problems is that it becomes a lot easier to remember them, because our brains are more likely to remember something if it took a lot of energy working on it. Although spending a lot of time on these difficult problems will make you better at maths, it is definitely worth practicing the skill of answering problems on tests. This could almost be viewed as a skill separate from general maths. So how do we work on this skill? There's a few different techniques you can use here, but I'll talk about some of the most useful ones. The first and most useful is doing past papers. I understand there are a lot of people who this isn't an option for, but if you do have this option, I definitely suggest taking advantage of it. Not only do you get a feel for the type of questions you'll be asked, but also provides practice for answering these questions at a good pace. 
But if you don't have access to any past papers for practice, even if you do have access to past papers, I'd still strongly recommend this next technique, which is doing timed questions. Set a timer or a stopwatch for a couple minutes and try to do the question as fast as you can. Even if you finish the questions fast enough without a timer, this is still useful because the added time pressure which simulates the test environment. Let's go over a real life situation that you might find yourself in. Let's say I'm learning vectors. Let's start by building a foundation. We'll start by reading the chapter in the textbook. Maybe it makes sense, maybe it doesn't. Next, we'll go to YouTube. Type in vectors. Those first few videos that show up are exactly what I'm looking for. A deeper understanding to what a vector is. I'll spend 15 minutes, or maybe even less, doing these simple questions just to make sure that I'm able to solve them. Now let's go to the back and start doing the really hard questions. Because these are pretty good, I won't need to go to another textbook, but I could if I wanted to. Once we get close to a test or exam, we'll do some more time questions from either a textbook or past exam or test. I'll do these past exam questions but with a time limit for some extra pressure. Once I've gotten fast enough at these, and I generally get them right, I've learned vectors with deep enough level and I'm able to do final tests. Let's go over some common situations that you might find yourself in. I can follow what the teacher does, but I can't seem to solve the problem for myself. The key here is to think about what is being assessed. This is a bit harder in an exam, but think about the topics you've learned and what methods it wants you to use to solve the problem. Another thing that helps here is just the experience you gain from answering enough test-like problems. Something to note is that just because you can follow along with your textbook or what your teacher is doing, it doesn't mean they actually fully understand it or you're able to solve the problem on your own. So make sure you really understand the topic and you're able to solve the simpler problems on your own without any help. I do final questions, but I make so many small mistakes that adds up and brings down my marks. This is actually something that I can personally struggle with. Nothing is more frustrating than looking through your marks and seeing you've lost a huge portion of your marks to simple mistakes like misreading the question or losing a negative sign along the way. The fix to this problem is getting better at taking tests. Do more practice tests and timed problems to see an improvement. These will help because these mistakes usually come from trying to work fast due to being unfamiliar with the time pressure. Alright, let's go over some general study tips. Something that I strongly believe in is that it's more beneficial to spend less time studying but studying more intensely than a long study session where you didn't think very deeply. Something I hear very commonly from people is that they study for 6, 7, 8 hours a day. And at first you might think that's impressive, but when you find out more, they're watching YouTube in the background, taking breaks, they have their phones near them or whatever else. But the thing is, it's not 6, 7, 8 hours of focused, deliberate study. Studying, especially for maths, should feel hard. It should feel deliberate and it should be fatiguing. If it isn't hard and tiring, you're most likely attempting questions that are too far below you. I can promise you, you'll make so much more progress by having extremely focused short study sessions than longer dragged out sessions. Just because you spent more time studying doesn't mean it was more effective. Another tip that's kind of strange, but it might help a few people, is to talk through the problems. Imagine you're making a YouTube video or you're explaining the process to someone else. The benefit of this is that you'll feel more confident in your answers as they'll be a lot more thought out. It also means that you're less likely to skip steps and make small mistakes that take away marks. Something that's extremely common is taking notes. And I can understand why people do it, but honestly, I would recommend against taking notes during class. If you spend those note taking times thinking about and focusing what is being taught, you'll understand the subject a lot better than if you were mindlessly copying what the teacher is saying or writing. If you do decide to take notes still, take the notes after your teacher has explained the subject and after you've thought about it for a while. It's better to be thinking about the subject a lot than it is to just copying down the notes. So to sum everything up, build a really strong foundation for your knowledge and study from different sources. Relearn the content from YouTube, from your textbook, from forums or from fans. Spend a lot of time just thinking about maths and about your subject and see how it relates to other fields of maths. See where the field leads to and what other aspects there are. Do a lot of practice. Spend majority of your practice time doing the most difficult problems that you're able to do. Struggle as much as you can because this makes the understanding stronger and your memory better. And if you're learning maths for school, make sure you take advantage of timed questions and timed practice papers. If you have anything to add in the comments, please do so. And if something has worked really well for you, please share it. And as always, links will be in the description. Thanks for watching.